if you want to enter the iPad 9.7 Pro giveaway contest, all you need to do is leave a like and comment. Hit a subscribe button and make sure that the bell notification is turned on. The giveaway link is in the description. We love success stories and successful people. They inspire us to be successful and make our lives better. But in this world, far away from the Forbes 500, there is a group of people working tirelessly in close quarters on things that have tremendous impacts on humanity and our whole planet in general. While the 24-hour news cycle can sometimes make the world seem like a dark and cruel place, there is plenty of good to be found. With that in mind, we take a look at 7 Amazing Rescues Caught on Camera. Two men rescued drowning teen. The riptide at Albalone Cove in Rancho Palos Verdes, California would have claimed the life of a teenage boy if two men hadn't intervened. A group of people including Gary Golding, Hilary Swanson and Rob McNulty and his two children spotted the boy being swept away by the current. Golding, 46, proceeded to jump into the cove in an attempt to rescue the boy. However, quickly realizing that the currents were stronger than he was, he too began fearing for his own life. He also started being dragged by powerful tide in and out of the cave, along with the unconscious teen. Gold told Inside Edition, I'm in there fighting for my life and I can't grab him because I can tell there's not even keeping my own head above water. Golding had to give up to save himself. He somehow pulled himself out of the water. It was then that his friend, Robert McNulty, decided to make a last gasp dive into the ocean. He's right there! Go, go, go! Over. Grab him! Thankfully, he reached the teenager who was floating face down in the surf. Gary Golding carry out chest compressions. The boy was airlifted and brought to the hospital where he is currently in recovery. McNulty suffered cuts to his legs during the rescue. Utah troopers rescue man from train crash with seconds to spare. The video taken in Centralville, Utah showed Coria stopping his patrol vehicle and racing up a short embankment toward a car that was parked on the train tracks with its lights on. Correa risked his life to pull the unconscious man out as a train barreled towards them with anywhere from 50 to 80 miles per hour. Lights from the front of the train can be seen growing brighter as it gets closer, with just seconds before the train struck the vehicle, dragging it along the tracks for about 30 feet. Correa could be seen pulling the man's body from the car. The two tumbled down the embankment and rolled into a fence. The train could be seen stopping. Correa said it appeared that the driver of the vehicle, who had not been identified, had been suffering an unknown medical condition. Rescuers find soccer kids trapped in Thailand cave. On June 23, 2018, 12 members of the team aged 11 to 16 and their 25-year-old assistant coach entered the cave after a football practice. Shortly afterwards, heavy rains partially flooded the cave, blocking their way out. Efforts to locate the group were hampered by rising water levels and strong currents, and no contact was made for more than a week. The rescue effort expanded into a massive operation amid intense worldwide public interest involving international rescue teams including Thai Navy SEALs, United States Air Force Team, UK's BCRC, Australia's Specialist Response Group divers, Japanese divers and engineers, and many more. On July 2nd, after advancing through narrow passages and muddy waters, British divers John Volathan and Richard Stanton found the group alive on an elevated rock about four kilometers from the cave mouth. Yeah, best you can. Thank you. How, how many of you? Thirteen. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. 
Back pack is he going inside? No, not today. Oh, not today. <laughs> we are coming. It's okay. It's okay. Many people are coming. Many, many people. We are the first. Many people come. What, what day? Tomorrow. No, 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 what day is it? They're asking. Oh, no. <laughs> Monday. Monday. Okay, but one week and Monday. You have been here ten days. Ten days. You are very strong. Very strong. Really happy We we are happy too. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So where you come from? England, UK. Oh. Rescue organizers discussed various options for extracting the group, including whether to teach them basic diving skills to enable their early rescue, wait until a new entrance was found or drilled, or wait for the floodwaters to subside at the end of the monsoon season months later. After days of pumping water from the cave system and a respite from rain, the rescue teams hastened to get everyone out before the next monsoon rain, which was expected to bring a potential 52 millimeters of additional rainfall and was predicted to start around July 11th. On July 8th, 18 rescue divers consisted of 13 international cave divers and five Thai Navy SEALs were sent into the caves to retrieve the boys, with one diver to accompany each boy on the dive out. The boys were dressed in a wetsuit, buoyancy jacket, harness, and a positive pressure full face mask. When the team reached the boys, Dr. Harris administered anesthetic to the boys before the journey, rendering them unconscious to prevent them from panicking on the journey and risking the lives of the rescuers. Between July 8th and 10th, all 12 boys and their coach were rescued from the cave by an international diving team. The rescue effort involved over 10,000 people, including more than 100 divers, scores of rescue workers, representatives from about 100 government agencies, 900 police officers, and 2,000 soldiers, and it required 10 police helicopters, 7 ambulances, more than 700 diving cylinders, and the pumping of more than a billion liters of water from the caves. Semen Kunen, a 37-year-old former Thai Navy SEAL, died of asphyxiation during the rescue on July 6, while returning to a staging base in the cave after delivering supplies of air. The rescue diver, Barut Pakabara, died in December 2019 of a blood infection contracted during the operation. Woman Saved from a Raging River In July 2009, Patty Ralph Neely fell into the Des Moines River in Iowa, U.S., where the boat she was crewing with her husband capsized. Kept afloat by her life jacket, she bravely spent nearly 30 minutes thrashing against the strong current before a group of building workers nearby spotted her. Oglesby was on a construction crew helping build a pedestrian bridge when he swooped in to save a stranger's life while risking his own. Dangling precariously from a crane in a makeshift harness, rescuer Jason Ogilby lowers himself. One slip and he might have been swallowed in the same waters. He held on tightly to her arm. The heroic worker then pulls the woman up out of the water as she gasps for air. The driver maneuvers the pair to calmer waters. A rescue boat then took the frightened woman aboard. Sadly, the woman's husband was pronounced dead when he was pulled from the water. From the riverbank, former registered photographer Mary Willie snapped a dramatic photo of the rescue that won a 2010 Pulitzer Prize. Oglesby, 53, died in the wee hours of April 4, 2017 at Iowa Methodist Medical Center. A shaking woman secretly slips a handwritten note to a veterinarian. It was a typical day at work at a local Deland Animal Hospital, Florida. Different pet owners visited the vet to treat their baby, but soon the unusual day turned in shock when this average-looking couple entered the hospital. Carolyn Riekel convinced her boyfriend Jeremy Floyd to take their dog to the vet. She somehow managed to slip note to the receptionist. 
Surprise staff hurried open the note just to find shaky handwriting begging for help. Evidently, the woman survived two days of abuse at her house. Floyd didn't let her escape and punished her in any failed attempt to do so. Her shaking handwriting in the note wrote, Call the cops. My boyfriend is threatening me. He has a gun. Please don't let him know. As soon as the staff got the paper, they quietly alerted the Deland police. All they could do now is wait. It's a tense wait before cops show up. Finally, after 15 minutes, five cops came to the rescue. The woman burst in tears shortly after the arrest and starts showing cops her bruised body. According to Riekel's statement, this was not the first time she tried to get out of the violence. Initially, she jumped out of a bedroom window and ran down the street, but Floyd immediately caught her in the act and dragged her back to the house. He then threatened her with sexual assault. Helicopter Rescue on Yuba River Emerald Pools may be known for its sweeping views and natural beauty, but a rescue on Saturday showed the dangers of the idyllic spot on the South Fork of the Yuba River near Nevada City. The California Highway Patrol used a helicopter to save a man standing on a rock near the top of the waterfall. Kalani Tuyano of Reno had been swept downriver from Emerald Pools before grabbing onto a lone rock in the middle of the river, less than 10 feet away from a 40 to 50 foot waterfall. Officers and a fire paramedic located Tuyano and lowered a basket from a helicopter for his rescue. Two. Almost to him. Continue forward and left. One and hold. Okay, he's at the patient. Getting okay. him in. Okay. Getting him in. Okay. He's in. That's in. Okay, clear the lift. Okay, come on up. Power's good. Bring him up. Okay. Halfway up. Good job, Mon. The man is swiftly secured to the rescue device and transported over water and terrain by pilot Monty Emery until he's placed expertly and safely on the ground. CHP personnel also rescued Tuyano's girlfriend, who had gotten stranded on a ledge in the same area. She had been searching for her boyfriend. The swimmer was treated for all injuries and survived the harrowing ordeal, relatively unscathed thanks to the emergency responders. BART Employee Saves Passenger O'Connor, a BART transportation supervisor, was helping control crowds at the Coliseum station immediately following Oakland Raiders football game, helping people move through the station, when a man who appeared to have been in his late 20s fell onto the southbound track as a train approached the platform. A train was coming at 36 miles per hour, so with the man on the track, O'Connor got down at the edge of the platform and grabbed the man by the shoulders, hefting him and rolling him onto the platform. The train, O'Connor said, was perhaps 60 feet away when the man was pulled onto the platform. Tony Bedilla, who was on the platform and made a video of the aftermath of O'Connor's actions. Good work, man. If you did enjoy today's video, please drop a like as well as subscribe to my channel for more amazing videos and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.